Hello, Internet. My name is Daniel O'Brien, and welcome to another penetrative episode of Obsessive Pop Culture Disorder, the show that is this one. When well, the first and last reason to include a sex scene into a movie is to needlessly flaunt perfect celebrity bodies, you're bound to have some shitty outings, like these. <laughs> Ram Stoker's Dracula never seemed like it knew whether it wanted to be a good, scary movie or a silly, campy movie. On the one hand, it's got Gary Oldman being goddamn perfect and creepy as always, and on the other hand, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> And on the gripping hand, it's got some of the most perplexing sex scenes in movie history. In this scene, Keanu's Jonathan Harker, who is engaged, is in bed, and a bunch of naked vampires appear and start rubbing and licking him. He makes a half-hearted attempt to stop them before deciding, you know, I don't really care about my fiance that much. And even though the owner of this house is scary and weird beyond all reason, you gals seem normal enough. I don't think it's weird that you appeared out of nowhere at all. Oh good, there's three of you now. Seriously, if they hypnotize him, it happens off screen because he is immediately on board with this situation, even though he's in a committed relationship and these women are just lifting up through the bed. The look on Keanu's face suggests he's having the best sex of his life. And they're really just, licking his arm and chin. Like he's still mostly clothed at this point and having the best sex ever, somehow. And then one of them with snake hair takes out his dick and smiles at it in a way that suggests, I'm gonna bite that dick. And he's like, you better not. And then she does. And he jolts up like, oh no, my boner. And then Dracula comes in and he's like, that's plenty. And whoa, I didn't know vampires could have snake hair, crazy. Anyway, knock it off, eat this baby instead. <laughs> Yeah, I'm serious. I meant that. That happened. Francis Ford Coppola packed a scene full of naked women, some boner biting, a 12 foot tall Gary Oldman, and capped it off with some baby eating. This is what I mean when I say this movie had no idea what it wanted to be. Is it scary or ridiculous? Where the hell did they get that baby? How can that be enough to feed all those vampire brides? And why is this scene in the movie? Another Keanu Reeves one. Man, we are really giving it to Keanu today. Speaking of giving it to Keanu, look at etc. The Matrix Reloaded opens with a celebration of sorts with all the humans living outside the Matrix. There's a nice speech, and everyone's happy, and as is often the case, a wild rave breaks out, and then Neo and Trinity go have sex somewhere. There's no reason for this scene to be in this or any movie. It's a weird, slow motion sex scene that looks very uncomfortable. Neither person looks like they're enjoying it. Also, with their short dark hair and their cold nothing eyes and the general white porcelain dullness of their bodies, Neo and Trinity essentially look exactly the same. So sometimes I can't tell if they're having sex or if Keanu was just wiggling naked on top of a mirror. But that's all fine. Everyone would probably have sex with their twin if society decided it wouldn't be weird. We don't know. The thing that makes this sex scene ridiculous is that it's intercut with the slowest, dirtiest rave orgy ever. The sex pheromones that Neo and Trinity have been giving off must have been really strong because everyone catches what scientists at Columbia University refer to as boner fever. And the rest of the resistance immediately starts indiscriminately f***ing in the middle of their robots are bad party. Oh, it's so dirty. There are so many people around. I forgot how many nipples The Matrix Reloaded made me look at. There were hardly any in the first one. And now it's like open season on nipples. Well, all these sweaty people writhe on each other. Is this supposed to be sexy? Neo and Trinity just sort of like bopping on top of each other, intercut with these impossibly filthy people. Hey, wait, go back to that. What the hell just shot out of your f***ing head? Is that all sweat? You're flipping back there? This is my thing. Is this scene supposed to be sexy and romantic or completely insane? You can do slow motion lovers having passionate sex somewhere. And you can do dirty underground subway toilet orgy, but you can't do both. That is a rule of screenwriting. Sid Field said that, I think. Nine and a Half Weeks is an erotic romantic drama starring Kim Basinger as Elizabeth McGraw and Mickey Rourke as John Gray, a Wall Street type with some less than conventional sexual fantasies. Close your eyes. Put this line on the floor. Rich, dominating, emotionally distant, suit-wearing man named Gray with a unique sexual appetite who charms a young woman and then everything goes bad. There's a Fifty Shades of Grey parallel that I'll refuse to comment on until I see that movie. So, look forward to that episode coming in never. Mickey Rourke and Kim Basinger have sex at work, in public places, while cross-dressing, and all the other big hits. Now, here they are having fun with food and showing that sex can be silly sometimes, which it can be. And then they use honey for lube. And then they use honey for lube. And then Eric, make sure the microphone is working because I want the internet to hear me when I say that then they use honey for lube. I'm reminded of that old aphorism my mom used to say. It's all fun and games until some Wall Street broker pours honey into your vagina. My mother is a very specific woman. Don't misunderstand me here. I don't want to ever deprive anyone of their kinks, but let this serve as a public service announcement. Honey and lube are not interchangeable. They don't serve the same function, and aside from that, honey 
When entered into a vagina can cause candida, a yeast infection. When I started this show, it was never my intention to have to dispense this kind of information, but I know 19-year-old college students watch this, so just in case you also watched nine and a half weeks and thought, honey, is a good lube in a pinch. You should know that it will be way too sticky for your purposes. It will be insanely difficult to wash off your parts. Have you ever got sap on your hand and tried to get it off? It's f***ing impossible. Also, and for the final time, I hope, it will probably cause a yeast infection. If none of that matters to you, you should also know that if you use honey as a lube the next day at work, when your coworkers smell you, they're gonna assume you f***ed a box of golden grams. That might be fine for you. That might be the vibe you're trying to put out at work, but I just, I don't want you to be surprised when the next day people are like, Oh, Gina f***ed the Cheerios bee last night. How fun for Gina. It'll happen. Also, this is the actual music they chose for the sex scene. I mean it. I had nothing to do with that. If I was going to dub my own music over a sex scene, I'd do yakety sax all day like a true patriot. That song is in the actual erotic thriller movie. Teen Wolf is a movie about a teen wolf you already saw, and if you didn't, you're bad. Michael J. Fox learns he can turn into a werewolf, and true to the old stereotype about werewolves, is very good at basketball. He uses his newfound wolfdom to just dominate the court and up his popularity game until, of course, his ego flies out of control, and then, of course, he learns a valuable lesson about believing in himself, and that's how movies go. Before all that, this boy, who is also a wolf, who is also a basketball star, who also plays a minor role in the school play, is seduced by Pamela Wells, the popular girl of his dreams, in a dressing room backstage. She is attracted to the popularity that naturally accompanies basketball-playing monsters who can act. Sergeant! Burn the field! And wants to reward him with sex. This is fine and absolutely consistent with my high school experience. But the weird part comes when she demands that he has sex with her as a werewolf. She doesn't want a one-night stand with Michael, she wants one with Teen Wolf. What happened to the wolf? Do you just change back and forth? Whenever you feel like it? Uh, sure. Well, uh, sometimes I, I have to get kind of worked up to be the wolf, but uh, it's not too hard. What do you think about to get worked up? Ah. Uh. Different things. Wolves aren't supposed to be shy. I don't know too much about women, but I know a lot about dog penises. Enough that I feel like I can confidently say that it probably isn't what most women want. The fact that Pamela will only have sex with Michael J. Fox when he's a wolf goes beyond fun kink territory and into a much darker world involving sex with slimy internal organ looking like, tubes. I'm just describing what a realistic wolf erection would look like. It looks like a slimy, like, mad tube. That's just what they look like. I'm not on trial here. She's the one who's into it. Also, it should be noted that dog slash wolf penises are not designed for pleasure, they're designed for function. They're built in a way that makes them difficult to withdraw, so a lot of dogs get dragged around by the dick even when their partners are like, bye. Again, everyone's sex things are fine. I just doubt sex with Teen Wolf is going to be as great as Pamela Wells imagines. There's a postscript to that scene that involves Pamela trying to leave the dressing room before the janitor shows up, but Teen Wolf is still trapped inside her, like, please assure me this is how sex generally goes for everyone, and she's all, nope, you're weird at sex and you should know that forever. Welcome to high school. Desperado, the second in Robert Rodriguez's Incredible Mexico trilogy, follows Antonio Banderas as El Mariachi, a guitar playing badass out for revenge on a drug dealer. Salma Hayek plays Carolina, a bookstore owner, and there's an extended sequence shot almost exactly like a porno where the two of them have sex. Not for any real plot purposes or anything, just because Robert Rodriguez had access to two genetically perfect humans, felt it was his sense of duty to get them naked together for you, the people. I think I'll ever own as many little candles as people who have sex in movies. Where did they even find time to light all those? He was shot earlier that day, she had to stitch him up. He played guitar for a while and then they just decided, hey, let's really go for it, but first I need to light like 200 thousand little candles and barely give off any light. It's gonna be real hot when we have sex in 19 minutes. The movie never elaborates. And then we get into the actual sex scene. We start off with some fun, clothed whispers. Followed by, again, someone just like, mouth-palming someone else's chin. Then the one-two punch of the Spider-Man kiss and chin lick. Is that a thing for people? If a woman put my chin in her mouth, I'd just politely be like, No, honey, you missed. It's, you have to go just, just north of there. That's, this is where I keep my mouth. The rest of the scene is mostly just them taking turns lunging at each other and putting their hands in each other's mouths. Antonio finished playing guitar before this, so his fingers are definitely gonna have that gross, tinny guitar strings taste. And her fingers will either taste like matches from lighting all the candles, or antiseptic left over from when she dressed his wounds earlier, so these are the flavors. At some point, someone runs a spur along someone else's butt, and because of the way this was filmed, I have no idea whose butt that is. It is the butt of whichever one of them would be into having a spur dance around their butthole, which... I don't know what that kind of person looks like. 
so I can't draw any meaningful conclusions. After this brief porn scene, the awesome action movie that we had been watching continues, and the 14-year-olds who saw the movie develop very misguided and confusing perceptions of sex that will persist until college when someone says, please put those spurs away, that was just a movie. And these candles are going to burn the dorm to the ground. Anyway, that's it for this sex ruining episode. Join us next time when our topic will be five intentionally not hilarious sex scenes in movies. So just like romantic sex scenes, not a lot of room for jokes. You can probably skip that one. Anyway, bye. Hey everybody, thanks for watching that weird video. Um, in the comments, let us know whose who's butt that was that got spurred. Who that butt was. Fine, whatever answer wins, whatever gets most upvotes or whatever, we decide that's the one, then I'll, I will, uh, I, don't, I have no idea what to do with that information. I'll just remember it if I ever see Antonio Banderas and be like, it was your butt, we voted on it, everybody talked about it, we decided. It was a weird time to bite an apple. Bye.